Okay, guys, the topic of the week is uh, Gantt charts, and that is sort of also linked, not sort of, it is linked to the scheduling. So, guys, when I want you to see this, when I see, when you see this, I want you to see in your mind's eye uh, the, the network diagrams that we've done. It's exactly the same information, but we just show it in a different way. We show it in a different way because... Because it's just a nice visual way to tell you the same story that the that the, the, the network flow or the scheduling tools is telling you. Now, so a chart is just another tool that we use. So when we look at this, remember we are busy with scheduling. It's the same information um, that we have in terms of the flow and the network diagrams. Okay, so what do we need? Again, we need the same set of information. We need the activities, we need the duration, and we need the sequence. And this is the way we are showing this, exactly the same as we used to have. We've got the activities, we've got the duration, and we've got the sequence. So a Gantt chart is a visual tool. Remember, the Gantt chart is in scale, which says that these, the length of these blocks actually tells you something about the project. So what we are saying is the activities are presented by, in our case, these yellow blocks that you have over here. So you've got your activity, you've got your duration, you've got your predecessor, and you've got the yellow block showing you what happens. So what we say is, if you look at this over here, you say activity A does not have a predecessor. That's why activity A starts on zero. It's got a duration of two, so it's one, two blocks. That's why the yellow block is there. Activity B has got a duration of three, and you need A to be finished. So you start activity B when activity A finishes. It's got a duration of three, one, two, three. There's your yellow block. Activity C needs A, same thing over there. It's got a duration of five, one, two, three, four, five, and that's why the block is over there. Activity D, it needs activity B, there's activity B, so it starts on there, duration of three, and activity E needs D and C. There's C, there's D. You finish it, you start activity E once all the activities are finished. Now, so you can't start uh, E on seven because then activity D is not finished yet. So you wait for both the predecessors to be finished and then you can put it in there. Good. So what is the arrows telling us? The arrow shows me that just to help us with, uh, you know, so that you don't get confused. Because if you don't have that, why would this not be linked to the beginning or something else maybe? Same with this one. This is probably a better example. Activity uh, a D needs B, but B is not right next to that. So we just put an arrow there to help us to show that. And then if you look at E needs C and D, but just look at C sits over there. Okay, so we put the arrow in there so that you can know that activity, activity E, needs C, but there is a bit of float in that. So you can actually move up this one activity so that you don't del delay the project, but you don't do any harm whatsoever. So you are using up your float. So that's just the way we show the float as well. Okay, so the process that we follow is in there. Go and read through that. Basically, guys, it comes down to first draw the colors, then draw the lines, and then identify your critical path. Have a look at my example that I have um, out there and, uh, and see if you can do the examples, the other examples, and the tutorial so that we can go on with the rest of the work.